Hi, and thank you for tuning in to our first quarter 2020 market view. I'm Miranda Metz with Fort Pitt Capital Group. Those of you who have seen our market views in the past and our quarterly reviews will see that we're changing up the formatting a little bit. Um, times are challenging right now. Everybody says that and it's so very true. And we want to stay fully connected with you. With that in mind, we've collected our most frequently asked questions about the coronavirus, the economy, and the market during the past quarter. And we're going to take the time to answer them here with you today. Um, before we dive into financial questions, though, we wanted to start by addressing the many thoughtful questions that we've, we've received um, about us. How is our team doing? And I am very happy to report that the Fort Pitt family is holding up very well. We're actively participating in social distancing. Our operations team has us all set up so that we can fully function at our at-home offices. Uh, we communicate through a reliable and most importantly secure program called Microsoft Teams. Um, it allows us to do things like chat internally, make phone calls, and create live or recorded videos, such as the one that you're watching now. Um, do bear in mind that we are at home, so if you do hear any um, fur uh, family, fur, furry coworkers in the background, forgive us. Um, the Teams app um, has really allowed us to stay connected both internally and with you, our clients. Um, it's allowed us to keep up with the heavy influx of communication that's needed during times like this. And one of the most important functions of our job is to stay connected, connected to you. With that in mind, we're going to go through all these questions, but we want you to know that you should never hesitate to reach out to us. If any of these questions have an angle that you want to talk about on a personal level, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. Your um, advisors are here, and so is the rest of the team. That's our job is to be there for you. All right. So, um, Today is Wednesday, April 8th, and this Q&A session is going to be um, broken down into segments so that um, it's going to be easier for search and viewing and so that you don't have to sit through the entire thing at once if you don't want to. We're going to talk about the virus. We're going to talk about the government, um, the Fed, and economy response. We're going to talk about the market, um, trends, timings, opportunities. We're going to talk about Fort Pitt strategy specifically. And then the final category is going to be just sort of miscellaneous um, the questions that didn't necessarily fit to the other categories, but we thought it was important still to address with you. Um, the market analysis is going to be provided by Dan I. He is our head of asset allocation and equity research and by Charlie Smith. He is our chief investment officer. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first topic is the virus. And we're going to start with Dan. Dan, how are you today? I'm doing well, Miranda. Thank you. Great. So the first question, um, <clears throat> they are, uh, uh, are there any new developments that leave you feeling more encouraged or more concerned with the virus? So I would say much, much more in, encouraged. We think that there's a lot to be encouraged about. And, and one that one factor, it's certainly not not new, but we are encouraged by the by the push from the global pharmaceutical industry, you know, both in terms of advancements in, in testing capabilities and, you know, the efforts to find therapies and, and at some point a, a successful vaccine. And there's a lot that we could we could go into and, and cover here, but I'll just keep it short and saying that, you know, we would not want to bet against the type of, of talent and, and resources that are working on finding solutions. Um, we're also, you know, really encouraged by the, the drop off in, in new cases or new daily cases and new, you know, daily deaths in, in some of the, the hardest hit areas of, of Europe, uh, such as Italy and, and Spain. We've seen, you know, new daily cases on a worldwide basis, you know, start to look like something that resembles a, a crest over the past, you know, few days as well. And we're seeing, you know, similar <clears throat> near-term developments in the U.S. And, you know, equity markets have, have certainly keyed in on these developments a, as well. So I think these data points give us some, some indication that, you know, these social distancing efforts you know, are having their intended outcomes. Great, that's encouraging. Charlie, I'm gonna grab you for this next question. Um, everyone is talking about China and South Korea 
and how they have these successful efforts underway to slow the spread of the virus. Um, but we are not doing those same things in the U.S. So the question is, how can we model our return to normalcy after those countries when what we're doing is so different? Sure, it's a great question. Uh, obviously, the efforts in January by the Chinese central government to halt the spread of coronavirus uh, in the city of Wuhan in Hubei province um, could be described as dr draconian. Um, you know, but I think if you compare what we've done in the U.S., you know, basically commercially shut down 42 of our 50 states. Uh, I think what we've done here certainly comes close to uh, the, the very draconian measures we've seen in China. Uh, and they're beginning to show uh, results with the national growth rate in U.S. cases slowing materially over the last uh, 10 days or so. Uh, so we're making definitely making good progress. Uh, so perhaps maybe we can model our return to normalcy after some of these other uh, successful nations. Um, in that vein, we specifically expect the Trump administration to release an initial blueprint for a plan or a plan or process for reopening the economy. And we expect that plan to be released within the next 10 days. So um, stay tuned for a, a fairly specific plan on a graduated return to normalcy for the U.S. economy over the next several months. Can you go into that into a little bit more depth? Um, like how and when do you think the economy uh, will reopen? Well, um, the when is always harder than the how. I think you can put a, uh, a fairly good set of, of limits around how we're going to do it. We, we, we certainly have an idea of what the conditions need to be before we can start the process of opening the economy. So um, first, a state or a region can't open until we're past the peak of the initial wave of infection. That's pretty obvious. Right. Second, uh, health systems in each re region have to have the resources to deal with any second wave of disease. So, you know, we need to make sure we have all the personal protection equipment, all the ventilators, all the personnel in place, so that once we get past the initial wave, we have a um, infrastructure ready to deal with any second wave. And third, we need to have, and this is probably the most important, sufficient testing capacity has to be available to identify those people who are still infected or those with a prior infection and that have antibodies. Um, if, if we were able to meet these three conditions, I think the people who've recovered from the virus have immunity, are under 65, and maybe have no other medical conditions could start to start the process of coming back to work. Um, basically, those people presenting the lowest risks to not only themselves, but others will be about, allowed back first. And depending on the rate at which the initial wave peaks and begins to decline, this process could begin as soon as early to mid-May. 